In this video, we're going to do form generation in a slightly different method, which is also totally valid and interesting and awesome. Now, I'm actually going to begin in mid-journey. So I've already generated some material textures here. And to get textures like this, uh, I've used keywords like orthographic view, depth map, height map, and trim sheet. And this will help give a 2D textural style. And I've generated these pieces, and I'm going to just use one of these to showcase this whole process, which we'll be using the Substance Sampler 3D, which is part of the Adobe Creative Cloud. I'm going to open that up. create a new project and you can start by just dragging and dropping your texture file in so I have just upscaled my texture file and I'm going to drag and drop that into this scene and when I've dragged and dropped in my material my, my texture my image I'm going to set the output scale to the max resolution and this is going to use AI to generate the material layers from that texture from that image now it is going to do an AI powered image to material here on this object I see that my tiling is set to 2 so I'm going to change it to 1 and it doesn't look too exciting or too different from the base image just yet but if I switch here in the bottom to height where this starts to get really interesting is that this is creating a height map as well, which we can use to make 3D with. On this side, we can preview the displacement height scale, and this will show us a bit of what that 3D geometry will start to look like. Now, in the other software, I will probably be exaggerating it, but this looks pretty nice. And without any modifications on their defaults, I could roll with this. I will actually just use the geometry details controls here on the right side, though, to make some quick changes. Let's increase the large details and the small details. Maybe a little bit more. I like that the depth has gotten a little bit more exaggerated here. So I'm going to use this one. When I'm ready to take this file out, I just go to File, Export. I will pick a new folder. And I will name my export set. And it will actually, if you go into your material settings, export all of the layers that you have selected. Now, in my case, I am doing EXR files because they retain uh, more color information. And the most important one really is the height. I don't really need these other layers, but I could use these as a digital material. So take all the layers you might want for that process. But I'll say export. And now I have a height map texture for this. And so let's jump back into Blender. I'm going to delete everything in this default scene. And I'm going to begin by just adding some meta balls in. This is another really great way to make some form really quickly. And by default, the resolution on the meta ball is quite low. So if I go into the data properties for the meta ball, I'm just going to hit 0 0.2, which will help smooth it out a little bit. But I'll press Shift D, and I can really quickly just copy this around to blob out a new form. And of course, this is a great way to make really organic shapes at will. But what we're going to do first, maybe is try a half version. Now, to use this, you'll have to convert this to a mesh because it is currently a metaball object. So you just need to right-click and convert it to a mesh. I will make a quick copy of this, like so, and shade flat. And this shows us what it really looks like. To quickly smooth this object out, what we're going to do is we're going to hop into sculpt mode. I'm going to hit the R key and slide this down a bit and press Control R, which has remeshed it. It doesn't look very different, but now, instead of being a single polygon, each face is actually made of many. So if I go into the Mesh Filter and Smooth Brush and click and hold, it will smooth out the whole thing all at once, which will look pretty good. I will actually make another copy of this by going back to Object Mode and pressing Shift-D. And on this one, I am going to go into Edit Mode and Face Select and X-Ray, and I will delete part of it. What this will actually do is give me what's akin to a shell. So I delete the faces here. And now, I'll go back in, out of x-ray mode, I just have this exterior shell piece, which is a bit messy on the edges, but let's clean that up really quickly. I'm going to generate a solidify modifier, which we can give it just some amount of thickness that seems fine. I'll apply that, 
And just like the previous piece, what I'll actually do now is go into sculpt mode. I'll give this a little more res and press Control R to remesh it and then smooth that out. So we have three versions of this object now. <clears throat> we have the flat, the smooth, and the shell. Before we go on, I'm actually going to remesh this one more time to increase its resolution. So let's go about there. Mm, let's go farther. For this process, you need a lot of polygons. And I'm always keeping an eye on this number down here, so 500,000, that should be fine. But this operation is very polygon resolution dependent. So to use that height texture, I'm finally going to click on this texture properties button and click new and navigate to said texture, which was C8 for me. And I will open the height.exr, which is here. Now to activate it, I first have this one selected in the middle. I'm going to add a deform displace modifier, which by default has no texture in it. So I just need to select the texture I've added. And if we look at this now, this is that height texture applied to this object. This is currently being applied from the Z axis. So this is just coming directly straight down. So the edges are a little bit strange. So if I want to UV map this or use some other form of mapping, I can get it to showcase on all sides. And I'll show that right now. To do that, I'll go into edit mode on the object, which will hide the view of the modifier. I'm going to select all the faces by going up to the top left. And then I will right click and UV unwrap and do a sphere projection. Currently, it was again just projecting from the top. But in this modifier, if I switch from local to UV, you'll see that now it has distorted it around the spherical UV. Another thing you can do actually is to rotate the object and you can press control A and apply the scale, which then, or sorry, you can apply the rotation, which will then rotate how that is being applied to the object. Similarly, if you scale up the object and apply the scale, you'll see that that texture is being tiled across the object and if you press S and scale it down and apply the scale, now the object is smaller than a single tile of that, that image texture. If you want more resolution, as you see here, it's kind of breaking. I'm going to apply the scale here once more. You'll actually need to use remeshing in this process. So you can remesh before or after, but I'm going to actually drag it in the stack up to the top and type a number like 0.01. That's getting a little bit better. I can see down at the bottom that is significantly more polygons. Let's go add another 0, 08, make it a 2. And this is where it's starting to get extremely high polygon count. But it is also very close to that original image texture. This is being applied to a relatively complicated object, but you could also apply this to a flat plane. So if I add a plane to a scene, I'm going to edit mode. I just need to subdivide this, so I'll right click and subdivide it and increase those subdivision counts. And I already know I need a lot of polygons for this, so I just full subdivided to 10 three times. And now I'll go to deform, displace, and pick that texture, and voila, we can see that texture here. And this looks pretty good, but what I may want to do is play with the height a little. And there we go, we have that. Now lowering it a bit. In this case, to use this one, I'm actually going to apply this. And of course you could kit bash or scene bash with these kinds of assets already, which would look amazing, I'm sure. But let's do a little more. I'm gonna rotate this and I'm going to add a circle to the scene. Similar to the plane, I can actually see the jags in this circle. So I need to go into its edit mode select it and subdivide it. I'm going to subdivide this a few times. Which doesn't maybe look perfect, but it looks at least smoother. And now what I'll do is I will deform this mesh to a curve. And I'm going to pick that circle. And now if I was to scale this up a bit or scale this down a bit, scale the circle a different way. 
I can make something like a column out of my asset. This looks a little messy though. So I would work to get it a bit cleaner perhaps. Alternatively, you could just make a surface preemptively like I've done and apply this to our surface. So let's add our displace. In this particular case, you know, I could use this AI texture, but I'm actually going to just use another height texture that I already have. I'm going to go to my height textures folder, and I happen to really like this FDM clay texture, which is really just a series of bands, straight lines, which here you'll see has spiked it up because it doesn't have enough resolution. So first, let's do a remesh modifier, put that in the front, I'll do 0 0.01. This looks quite good, but it's also very dense. I'm going to reduce the size of that, and I'm going to scale this object down and apply the scale. I'm going to do it again, and then I'm going to increase the voxel subdivision via the remeshing. This is starting to look really nice, but I'm going to reduce the height on the texture, and voila, we have a strange blobby piece, which I quite like. And I think I will use this one. When I'm happy with something like this, I will say object, apply, and visual geometry to mesh. And of course, I could export this as an OBJ and do instant mesh with it. Uh, first, I'm actually just going to go into sculpt mode, use the mesh filter, smooth, and I will smooth this. I'll smooth it a little bit more. And now, I think I like it. So, I'm going to file export as an STL file.